This is Infinity, and I'm going to show you how to make the entomologist costume that you just saw modeled earlier, including the, uh, the giant bug catcher's net, <laughs> which I will get to in a minute, but let's talk about the outfit first. So for an entomologist, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman or a boy or a girl, it's going to be the same outfit. It's a unisex costume, and entomologists don't have a specific clothing item that they wear per se, um, other than maybe bug protection. So it's all about the accessories and the accoutrements. Um, before you start, you want to pick a color scheme. And the reason for that is, is if you're pairing up with someone that's dressed as an insect, and that's the reason why you're an entomologist, um, pick your colors to match with the costume of the insect. So if there's, if you're with a ladybug, you would want to use red, or if you're with a bumblebee, you would have yellow and black. In this case, this entomologist was with me in the dragonfly costume, uh, which was olive green. So we used, tried to use a lot of olive green in this costume. So I started off with this vest here, which is, um, I guess, a safari vest, a hunter's vest. And this was really the best way to display a ton of accoutrements. So we have, um, I made some ID badges um, to show if you're a, an entomologist professor. There's one here, there's one here, which is probably where your hunting permit would go. And then we have some really big tweezers sticking out over here. There's a big magnifying glass, that's a must. There's more tweezer-like apparatus. Not all of this you're going to be able to see on camera, but there's some like bug collection jars. I think there's some other smaller tweezers that I'm not finding. You have to arrange them in such a way so that you actually see them. Yeah, there's more stuff in here that you can't actually see. I guess another, another magnifying glass, and there's more small tweezers that are not going to be able to be seen on camera. Um, Yep, that's it. And then this is like a, a pouch. So this is, it's not a purse. <laughs> this is actually a man's travel case, but it looked like a good idea. I guess an entomologist needs some kind of a bag with them to put his, um, keep his specimens in, right, out on the field when you're out collecting bugs. So this was also an olive green color, and this is a brown strap. I found a green strap to use for this, and... Well, let me get to, the, to the, the rest of it in a second. So underneath we had an olive green shirt. There's two of them here. Um, I don't know which one he wore. One of those olive green shirts to match. Uh, this is a green t-shirt that was used. Um, safari pants. Well, safari color anyway. Um, you know, cargo pants are always a good idea because of... I guess you would want a lot of pockets if you're collecting bugs, and you could put more stuff in those pockets. We have a little pouch over here. The belt was a matching color to keep with the color scheme. And then definitely, absolutely use a hat, right, because you're out in the field with the bugs, okay? So you want to cover yourself in bugs is a good idea. So again, in this case, the entomologist was with a giant dragonfly. So. I found um, some little dragonflies that are plastic on Teemu, and um, they're meant for like decorative things, like you're supposed to put them in a vase of flowers or in your garden, but this looks like bugs landed on you, so I put a bunch of those on the hat, and then there's more of them on the vest, um, some, I forgot all the spots where I put them. But also, you can buy stickers of bugs if you want them to be flat. In this case, you don't want anything sticking out of your back because you want to be able to drive the car, right, if you're an adult. Uh, and these were stickers, but I didn't stick them on. I just pinned them on with a pin instead. They were also from Team U. And they're, they're actually quite pretty. They're quite realistic. You get a whole baggie of them. Um, for like a few dollars. Uh, so footwear, always take care of your costume head to toe. Don't neglect any body parts. You want to do something with your head, do something with your feet. Hiking boots, 
is always a good idea to wear a more appropriate footwear that you would wear in the field instead of just regular shoes or regular sneakers. So hiking boots are always a more realistic op option of footwear. Now, the, um, so, the, so the reason that this bug catcher's net, and this was really the, uh, the main prop, is because we made this giant because you want it to be able to fit over the insect that you're with. So very briefly, this is what I did. This is an inexpensive plastic lightweight broom handle. I deliberately chose a cheap plastic one at the dollar store because that way it's not heavy, it's lighter to carry around. What this is, is a child size hula hoop. It's not a standard hula hoop that would have been enormous. This is the hula hoop that's meant for little kids. And the hard part, so before you get to the fabric part, you have to attach the hula hoop to the broomstick handle. And what I did was this whole entire thing, actually if you could pan down to the floor, that would be great. Lay this stuff down. Oh, the hula hoop lights up actually. Lay this stuff down. And then you want to trace around the bottom few inches of the, of the hula hoop and the top few inches of the broomstick. And trace that onto a piece of thin but cuttable plywood or masonite. This is some kind of, I don't know, this is, I think it's called MGM board. It's some type of plywood, but it's not real wood. It's masonite. So that you have a frame. So where you see this white tape, this was held, this is actually white duct tape. Underneath here is this wood. This is just a scrap of the wood. You can see that scrap was in here. Um, you lay down one of those frames, glue it on, glue, glue it on, wrap it with the white tape. Take the second piece that you cut, you need to make two of them, glue that on the top, and then wrap that around with white tape. Once you have your frame, this netting, so this is called netting. It's not tulle, it's not bridal veil. This is a much larger hole than just regular um, veil material that you would use for sewing. So it's called netting when you go to buy it. You have to have enough to cover this entire circumference. I didn't, and that's why there's a seam over here because I ran short. I had to gusset a piece in because I was just using leftover I had in the house already. When you close up this seam, you can use a zigzag stitch on the sewing machine and it held together quite well using a zigzag stitch. If you don't have a sewing machine, then you know, you, you got to sit there and, and hand sew. But that held together very well. Actually, that's inside out. The time consuming part is around the perimeter. I couldn't figure out a way how to get that on the sewing machine, how to pass that through. So this was hand stitched all the way around by hand, sitting, 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 and sewing and sewing and sewing. But once you got that, that's the final step. Once you do that, you're done. And this really steals the show, this giant set. Now obviously you can just buy a standard butterfly net on eBay or Amazon, but if you want to make the big splash, you get the uh, child size hula hoop or any other large hoop that you can think of, maybe a barrel hoop or something like that if you don't want it quite this big, and attach it to the uh, broomstick, which is probably the more time consuming part of the show because you have to cut the wood. Um, I think that's everything. Okay, so if you do this, enjoy. Have a good time.